hey everyone welcome back to our channel i'm yomesh gupta so in this video we are going to talk about how to improve your code base so basically when you work in an organization and you grow in a role then apart from your daily you know sprint task or your uh, jd you are asked or you are you know expected to do things or uh, contribute in a way that impact impacts the larger organization or maybe the larger in engineering culture of the organization there are a lot of ways to do so you can you know speak at conferences write blogs share knowledge or you know take some initiatives one of that initiative i would say is improving your code base so now that also is an umbrella term you can follow good practices you know you can advocate good practices in an organization uh, sometimes in a specific organization in such a big organizations you have specific platform teams taking care of you know larger organizations that affect the developer productivity be it you know build pipelines or in that regards but as a product engineer you can contribute or start contributing in small small ways so one part of improving your code base is to standardize things you know make sure that everyone is using the same things across the board uh, no matter in which squad which team they are working there are certain rules which are applied everywhere and one part which you know a lot of people have already set up in the project is eslint that you know you might be using airbnb config or something to uh put uh, checks on your code base that use this use that and so on but sometimes you need more than that sometimes you need custom es lint rules basically catered to your organization uh, this could you know be as simple as uh, let's say you have a you know a url in an uh, let someone can add a url to the code base and you want that every url should have uh, utm parameters so you can write a custom eslint rule for that that any url added to the code base code base should have utm parameters this could be you know something a little more complex like uh, uh, you want to deprecate certain components maybe in the design system you are releasing something new so you want to deprecate the usage of older components so you can create rules around that or maybe something uh, more complex or something more catered to your organization if you are already using custom ESLint rules and have implemented one, then please do share in the comments. So uh, let's get into the code to understand what we are doing. Let's get started. So let's say we have this app where we have one image and one P tag, uh, simple enough. So this is the output of the uh, our app where we have an image and title. So let's say someone decides to use or add a CTA to this uh, web page. So basically in our components there are two options new button and old button. Let's say the old button is a legacy component that is used across the app and uh, we cannot remove it because of the legacy reasons. I mean we cannot you know remove it because it is used a lot at a lot of places. We might remove it by you know code mod or make it or but in our case, we have to discourage the usage, the new usage. We want our new developers or someone who is creating a new file should not use old button. They should prefer the new button. So, like I said, in this video, we are going to create a custom ESLint, ESLint plugin that is going to throw an error to the user when they are trying to, you know, use this component. And we are going to take it a step further and we are going to integrate this plugin into the commit pipeline that if user is using the old button and they are uh, you know uh, trying to commit then we are going to throw an error so right now if i you know use this uh, old button from components old button and we use this here let's say let's add some styling padding 20 pixel 30 pixel and we say click me and we save it then we have this cta here right here which is not doing anything but we have the cta and there is no error right now so we are we are going to create a plugin that will throw an error when user uses this old button component so let's create our plugin now so at the very root of our project let's create a folder called eslint 
this would act as the package and inside we are going to create a file called package.json inside this we are going to have three keys uh, so this would be the name of the plugin it should start with esplint hyphen plugin and after that it could be anything let's call it custom rules then the version so it right now it should be one you can version it as per you then the main file so let's create index.js so we don't have index.js right now so let's create one inside this we are going to so basically this will act as the main file of our plugin uh, and inside this we are going to export all the rules for that uh, or for this plugin so module.exports rules inside this so our rule is basically going to imply that we need to prefer the new button so let's call it that prefer new button and we are going to require this from rules folder prefer new button.js so right now we don't have this directory so let's create one rules and inside this we are going to create the rule file prefer new button.js so right now we don't have anything so just export it so right now this file is empty so basically this file will contain the logic of uh, traversing uh, the code and uh, throwing an error so let's take a step back and see how ESLint works so let's take this entire app.js code where we have imported the old button let's walk through what we want to do so there is this uh, good uh, utility called AST Explorer that is going that help us to explore the abstract syntax tree that is the tree on which ESLint basically works so if we see here that we have you know import dec uh, declaration uh, three import declaration or four in this case because app.css then we have function declaration and the export declaration so if we see for the third one that is the old button if we open it then we have these properties type start end specifiers and source so if you if i hover over it then you can say it's highlighted the source is the source of the file and specifiers inside specifiers we have import default specifier and inside this we have the type which what type of import it is uh, start and end plus a variable called local that is the identifier node basically in this case and inside this we have type start and a name name of the identifier so basically you know you know dom is a tree you know you must have studied trees in your uh, you know cs uh, course and everything so this is the similar that you have you know a tree abstract uh, abstract syntax tree and this is just one on one mapping of whatever is happening in your code or in your program in this case we have import declarations we have function declaration and inside this we have you know tags and classes those properties and all so the area which interests us is this that inside import declaration we have to traverse over all the import declaration inside this we have you know specifiers inside the specifier we have the default specifier so basically this is an array if you see inside this we have the default specifier or it could be you know you have a you know a cherry pick if you want to you know no, uh, rather than default if you are exporting multiple things from a component inside that we have this variable local and inside this we have the name old button so if the inside and default the import declaration inside the specifiers we find old button then we need to throw an error so let's uh, see how we can do that so if we go to our prefer new button we are going to create this is would be our function create context we are going to return from this an object since we want to you know work on import declaration so we are going to make a function this would receive import declaration would receive a node this entire node inside this node we know that the specifiers is an array so if we have specifiers 
specifiers and uh, you know then we can traverse over it for each specifier for each specifier we can say if specifier dot local that's the name of the variable local dot name is equal to equal to old button then we are going to throw an error so context dot report basically the variable context we are getting we can you know it help us to throw an error so we are going to report that error basically node we are going to pass node plus the current uh, line item specifier dot loc and we are going to pass a custom message so in this case we can say do not use old button maybe we can call it old button and uh, if we do not found it then we can just simply return null so let's just uh, look again what we have done so basically we exporting a create function inside this we are uh, returning a method oh sorry returning object inside that object we have import declaration which is going to get the current node so if node has specifiers and we are going to traverse over each specifier because it's an array if the specifier name uh, dot local dot name is old button if you are going to find that then we are going to report an error where we are going to pass the node the loc and the uh, custom message that what message we want to show so we wrote the logic for our uh, custom eslint rule now let's uh, integrate this let's test it out so if i go to my package.json inside my dev dependencies i can you know add this custom plugin so it would be eslint plugin custom rules and file eslint and inside our eslint rc we are going to use this and we are going to write the name which is custom rules slash the rule we want to apply prefer new button and uh, to throw an error and in this case inside the plugins we will mention our custom plugin custom rules so let's do an npmi we could simply do the npmi for that plugin also let's do that that would be faster so let's go to package.json let's copy this so we can say npmi uh, add file eslint save dev though it doesn't matter we are just so basically this is going to copy our plugin from our root directory to our node modules So it's taking a bit time so it's installed now so if i go to app.js then it is throwing an error you can see earlier it was not throwing the error now it is that do not use old button and uh, this is the custom rule and prefer new button so our rule is working now so if we recap we just created the logic of the prefer new button here then inside our package.json we manually added it we could have installed it also just like i did and inside our eslint rc we specified the plugin we want to use plus the rule we want to rule uh, we want to use and uh, the type so and after installation now if we go back to our app.js we are getting the error and the custom message we are we were throwing that do not or we were reporting in this case do not use old button so right now our package uh, is here we can you know host it somewhere else and mention the url here so that we can use it inside multiple projects also 
if right now if i make any change to this file and i try to commit it i just add it and i try to commit it then i am able to do that because uh, you know there is no check on commit and we talked about it this earlier that we are going to put a check on preventing the commit if someone is using old button so let's do that so for this we are going to add a pre commit hook so let's install ski for that so while this is getting installed let's go to our package.json and inside let's add the husky configuration the changes we are it is required for this so these are the changes so basically we are going to add the husky configuration we are going to add a hook we are going to add hooks uh, and the hook is pre commit and inside pre commit we are going to pass lint staged and inside lint stage we are going to you know traverse over all the js and jxs files so let's install lint staged uh, ideally i should have done it save dev but i forgot so it would show up here it should show up here in dev dependencies but let's not fuss about that for now so it's going to be installed so there is some version with the latest version of husky that's why i use the uh, fourth version and uh, if i try to let's test this out if it's working so we have added the configuration and installed the dependencies so if i go to app.js and i make certain change and i save it then i go back to my app.js i add it and i try to commit knit so it is running the pre commit now and it is running the es lint and it fails and it fails with the error it says do not use old button and if i use new button now here new button and new button we just replace all the and we say git add dot app dot git add i forgot the syntax <laughs> app dot js uh, oh, source app dot js and we do it net and we commit now then it should work and it is working uh, we are successfully able to add the commit so this brings end to our video i hope you were able to learn something today if you are already using custom eslint tools uh, then please do share them in the comments do reach out to me uh, if you feel that i missed out something or i could have done something better then please do share that with me do mention in the comments also if you have stayed this long then uh, there's a link on the screen devtools.tech slash crazy ones uh, this is a simple easter egg on the website so i would recommend you checking that out um, as always do like share and subscribe so that our content can reach more people more and hopefully it would help them too so till next time see you tata bye bye